Professor Paul C. Witz is making the case that deficient fathers lead males to atheism. In this part, Witz gives a few specific examples of famous atheists with deficient fathers in order to pad out his thesis, and I critique his thoughts. Witz now goes on to describe the life story of Feuerbach, whose father was an ill-tempered philanderer who abandoned his family. He shows no causal link between the defective father and the atheist that Feuerbach became beyond his assertion, and at no future time does he ever offer any deeper insight into this than the generalised suggestion made in his opening thesis. Next he moves on to Arthur Schopenhauer. As I said, Arthur was 16 then, when his father committed suicide. He jumped out of a, a third story window of a building and was killed by the fall. Young Arthur thought that the whole cause of it was probably his mother. This is speculative. But it was shortly after that that Arthur said that he became very depressed about the world and it was clear to him that he had no confidence that God existed. Questioning of faith after a tragedy or under pressure is such a common occurrence that it's become a trope, a device that forms the backbone of a million cheesy movies. Not only is this the natural result of discovering that there is no loving father God taking care of his children, but it happens universally regardless of gender, faith and cause. It might just as well have been Schopenhauer's cat that died and his mother who lost faith in God. I know two other cases of this, not of famous atheists, but of friends, people that I know, where when a father committed suicide, in both cases it happened when the child, one a boy and one a girl, were 16. And within a year or two they had lost their faith. When they committed suicide, it was such a rejection of the child. And that's one of the things I think that people don't understand about suicide, or at least many people don't. They can understand that the person who commits suicide is depressed, but I don't think they understand how the others around them feel it as a terrible rejection. And it means that everything they stand for is painful to the memory of the people who survive and they often reject everything that person standard, stood for. Yes, this may be true, but again this is not a gendered issue. It occurs when mothers commit suicide, sisters, friends, even teachers or role models. But let's grant Vitz this assertion that atheism is a position that these people turn to as an instinctive and visceral response to tragedy in their lives. It doesn't make their disbelief in God untrue. It just means that their motivation for turning to it did not arise as a result of scholarly analysis of the pros and cons of the God proposition. Remember what Witt said earlier that attacking the motivation for believing in God was an ad hominem, just as attacking the motivation for atheism is. He later goes on to suggest that this sort of tactic is pointless whether used by theists or atheists to attack the position of the opponent, but as I've already showed, this is not necessarily the case. Furthermore, it seems almost implicit in Witz's argument that some of the planet's greatest thinkers, for whatever reason they were pushed away from belief in God, once they became atheists, were forever incapable of rationally analysing the proposition of God's existence. This is utterly nonsensical, as evidenced by the strength of their arguments. These were not merely the tortured cries of people in pain, but extremely cogent theses that blasted away the rationality of belief in God. Witz goes on to summarise the life of Freud, Voltaire and Hobbes, abbreviating their stories more with each example. However, when describing Voltaire, he says, Voltaire, as I said, he's probably a deist, an abstract kind of theist, so he's not the best pure atheist, but he was pretty close to it and often argued against um, the church and the Christian concept of God. Describing Hobbes, he says, He was also very anti-clerical, opposed to the church in many ways. It's clear that both Voltaire and Hobbes had issues with organized religion. Hobbes was really publicly more of a materialist. He was dangerous during his life. We're going back pretty far now into the 1600s. So in actual fact, it could be argued that both Voltaire and Hobbes were rejecting organized religion as much as any defective father figures. Indeed, Witz's assessment for the defectiveness of either man's father is extremely weak, amounting to nothing more than negative comments in letters and the fact that Voltaire wrote Oedipus, a play in which the father figure is murdered. 
His father was also a minister, and young Nietzsche had been close to him. Even as young as two years of age, young Nietzsche had gone and sat in his father's study and talked to him while he worked on his sermons. So he was close to his father, loved him as a little boy can, and then found his father die dead when he was about four and a half. Nietzsche missed his father all his life, and there are many comments about it in his latter years when he was a well-known philosopher. In summary, I would say that when Nietzsche said God is dead, he was psychologically saying dad is dead. Yes, but there is more to it than that. Nietzsche himself said that, that, that atheism, his atheism, wasn't something that was the result of thought. It wasn't a rational position. He said, I knew I was an atheist by instinct. From a psychologist's point of view, this means that Nietzsche knew that there was no God because his unconscious told him so. He knew it not because he was thinking about it, but because he felt it. To understand what is meant by this, you have to view his comment in the context of his life. Following the death of his preacher father, Nietzsche was groomed by his family to follow in his father's footsteps and raised in a suffocatingly oppressive religious environment. So in saying God is dead and declaring that he was an atheist, he was rejecting the life that he was being prepared for. In one sense, his famous statement was a metaphor not for the death of his father, but for the death of the life that his family had mapped out for him. Like Hobbes and Voltaire, Nietzsche recognised the harmful nature of Christianity and the evils it perpetrated, and he wanted none of it. In a sense, the atheism that he drifted into was a response not so much to his father's death, but to the state of the church. Nietzsche rejected God because he found its emissaries to be such poor witnesses for him. In the final part, Witz talks about famous theists and presents his conclusion, and I show why the entire thing is nothing more than an exercise in pandering to the faithful. Hey guys, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please take the time to rate and comment, and it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe. Thank you.